Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Yves Lescure, and I'm going to talk to you about the treatment of median knee osteoarthritis by INP Eversion Foot Arthrosis. INP is Analyzing Foot Arthrosis. So uh, let's have a look on the literature about the subject first. The osteoarthritis is the most prevalent joint disease in the elderly. And even if we know that um, it's a combination of metabolic and mechanical problem, it seems that the load applied to the joint is uh, play a key role in the development and progression of this disease. In a normal gait, uh, what it's important to, to remember is that you have three times the load on the medial compartment than the lateral. So this uh, high load on the medial compartment is maybe one of the reasons of the high rate of this medial compartment pathology and osteoarthritis. A very important point in the, in the literature and in the, in the biomechanical literature is that uh, osteoarthritis of medial compartment is very associated to uh, a biomechanical criteria, which is the external knee addiction moment. External knee addiction moment. And, and this criteria, it's important to, to remember that it's uh, proportional to the very small alignment. Okay, you can see here a uh, very small alignment. And you can see someone walking with a, a very small alignment. So, about this criteria, About this criteria, uh, another one. Okay, here you can uh, some, something very interesting. You can see that if you look at the the right leg, the, the right lower limb of this patient, uh, you can see that initially he has a, a very small alignment. But what is important to um, to see is that that uh, there's a lateral laxity of the joint. You can see um, when he's walking here uh, uh, a lateral translation. Okay. And uh, actually, what is very interesting with this uh, biomechanical criterion that it represents the very small alignment in motion, not only in, st in the static situation. So uh, 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 the external knee addiction moment consider the motion of the knee, so the laxity, which is often due to uh, a loss of uh, cartilage uh, in the medial, uh, in the medial com compartment. So this is the point. Uh, we can really, uh, it's really reliable. The external knee addiction moment is really about the, the knee motion and not the knee static situation. So a little explanation about this uh, ECAM, external knee, external knee addiction moment. We will call it ECAM for the rest of the presentation. Uh, just to make a little biomechanical uh, point. Actually this moment uh, is the project between the ground reaction force and, and the distance between the joint center of the knee and the action line of the grand reaction force. And so that's why it's proportional when this distance is uh, increasing, you have an increase of the ECAM. So that's what I was telling about the, the considering the motion of the knee and not only the static situation of the knee. That's why this, this, this uh, criterion is very interesting. So. Still about this uh, criterion, the ECAM. Two points very important. Two points very important. The first peak here, the first peak of the ECAM, uh, is really described as um, an important point proportional to the to the um, osteoarthritis development. And the second point is the knee addiction angular impulse, which is the area under the curve, okay, you can see here the curve of the HECAM and the area under the curve actually represent the cumulative effect of the HECAM. So these two points are very predictive to the structural progression in the osteoarthritis. The last point we have to do in the literature, uh, it's about foot arthrosis. Um, and it's very well known that lateral wage in soles have been, have been very studied in the, in the past literature and 
lateral wedge and sole cause reduction of the ECAM. Uh, it's a, a kind of reduction of the various malalignments in motion, okay? So, in the literature, it's very described. But the problem uh, that a recent systematic review and meta-analysis from Arnold in 2015 show that actually, it's okay, there's a reduction, but this reduction is not enough to play a role in the, um, in the treatment of this, uh, of this disease. And uh, maybe one of, one of the reasons of this lack of effectiveness is the discomfort uh, that you can have with that type of lateral wedge insoles. And most of the studies about the subject actually use only wedge like this, not really uh, custom-made insoles. So um, that's why. That's why the aim of the study, uh, uh, our study that we made with uh, our biomechanical laboratory, is to determine the effects of alanavine custom-made thermal form autosis on median knee osteoarthritis. No. no. Let's have a look on the on the methodology. Um, you've seen yesterday in the workshop how we manufacture in the uh, in the INP the, the foot autosis. And here is the evasion foot autosis and I will go into detail at the end of the, my presentation. So you can see a picture of the evasion. Alalavine shows us, uh, showed us uh, some type of them. Uh, and uh, you can see the picture of evasion foot autosis. And as I said, I will explain it uh, after, uh, at the end of the presentation. You know, because you had great weight workshops yesterday, uh, the, how we take the footprint of that type of foot autosis. Uh, the very important point to, to know uh, in the, the way we make it is that we take the footprint in the position of the foot and the lower limb corrected. This is very important. In order to have a, a perfect bearing surface um, between the insoles and the feet, uh, it's very important to, um, to have that type of, uh, that type of footprint. So, how about the patients? Actually, it's only a preliminary study, um, and we now have 18 patients with those characteristics, and with those inclusion criteria and exclusion criteria. The main criteria uh, is about the first, having median knee osteoarthritis, a uh, visual analog scale above three, a pain for at least more than one month, and uh, with we chose the Elbeck classification from grade one to three uh, as a radiography criteria. And the main exclusion criteria is that we, we wanted that our patients uh, didn't have any treatment in the past year, no food orthotics and no other medication. And then we made a, a biomechanical gait analysis with, with, thank you, and without food orthosis, with the same type of shoes and during five gate cycles and we calculate uh, the kinematics and the joint moment um, <coughs> with the ISB recommendations. Okay. The other part of um, our study is about questionnaires. Biomechanics is okay, but uh, we need to, to really realize if our patients are okay with our insoles. So three self-administrated questionnaires one about quality of life, and two about knee pain and function. And function. Uh, the quality of life questionnaire was the SF36, and the knee pain and function questionnaires was the WOMAC and the COOS. And then we analyzed the, the data, and we looked at, we looked at the biomechanical uh, ECAM, especially the first peak and KAAI, the knee addiction angular impulse, and we analyze our questionnaires to see what happened for our patients. So um, you can see on this graph a uh, free curve. The red curve represents the osteoarthritis, osteoarthritis patients without foot autosis, okay? And you can see here the first peak, okay? 
the blue curve represents the opioid-crisis patients with food alpheses, uh, and the black curve represents the normal gait of healthy people. And it's about the, the external knee addiction moment. So what we can <coughs> see first is that there's a real and significant reduction of the first peak of the external knee addiction moment, the ECAM, and we can consider too that there is a, a reduction. Yes, it's done. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, there's a significant reduction uh, of this first peak and a significant reduction of the PAAI. Okay. Um, what is important uh, in this significant reduction is the. Can you go before? Uh, is that we had a 0.39% body weight height reduction of this first peak, okay? A little clinical explanation um, about this reduction. Perfect, okay. If you compare, uh, normally it's easy to see, but you know video is sometimes uh, uh, a little bit disappointing. But if you look here at this knee, just you only look at this knee first, okay? You're going to see a kind of lateral translation because of, uh, of the laxity of the joint and certainly because of the um, loss of um, cartilage in the medial compartments. Okay, you have a, a, a joint laxity, okay? When you look at uh, it's only a test, it's not our, our study, but when you look at the, the same patient with the foot opposite and the shoes, uh, you see there's less, there's less translation, less lateral translation. It's just to make you understand why the, the ECAM is decreasing, okay? Why the ECAM, why there is a, a real ECAM reduction. So, Maybe the most important thing, there are questionnaire where are good results. Okay, we have a, a good result on this on this questionnaires. And the point is that anyway, it's only a preliminary study. Okay. We have uh, we want in the future more than 40 patients and we want to follow them for more than six months. And we want to randomize and, and make a randomized and controlled trial. But um, what is very interesting to, to consider about, uh, about this, this, uh, the beginning of this study is that actually we have a, a reduction on the first peak ECAM, okay? And this reduction is better than we found in the literature, especially in the meta-analysis we, we, we studied about Arnold and Al in 2015. They, they had a 0.15 Reduction, percent, uh, reduction body weight height, and we have 0 0.39 reduction. So <coughs> there's a, a big difference, um, and we're going to try to explain why we think we have this difference. And the other point is that all questionnaires are put, have a positive result. So, um, if we try to find the, the reason why we have so such good results like this. Um, we came back in the literature and we discovered four characteristics um, that, is very, that are very interesting. The first characteristic <coughs> is that some studies um, have, have proved that when you do a thermoform custom-made and individualized food arthesis, you have a better result on the biomechanical Criterion, the ECAM. This is the, the first point. Yes. The second point uh, uh, is that our foot opposites, alanabine foot opposites, has full length lateral wage. And it's uh, also a characteristic that gives uh, a good performance, a, a better performance in the literature. <laughs> We've seen that in the literature, when you have full length lateral weight, you have a better performance <coughs> on the ECAM. 
can see when you have the, the correction from the heel to the forefoot, you have so, uh, a better performance on, the, on this criterion. Maybe uh, uh, a third characteristic, maybe the most interesting, the medial arc support. Everybody thinks that medial arc support is not good for the medial compartment, but some studies uh, show that when it's combined with the lateral wedge, it makes improves the reduction on the ECAM. Maybe because it, it gives bearing surface, maybe, maybe because it gives comfort, uh, but it's very interesting that medial arc support associated to a lateral wedge insoles give uh, a really good impact on the, and a reduction on the ECAM. Here's the medial arc support. Oh, can you come back? Thank you. One. Okay. Here is the medial arc support, okay? And the last point. It's uh, our angulation. We have to treat that type of uh, osteoarthritis from sometimes from grade two or grade three on the elbow classification. We need angulation to have um, uh, a good performance on the ECAM. And the literature by Toda showed us that more you have an angulation, more you have a good result on the on the reduction of the ECAM. <coughs> so to conclude, what is a uh, very interesting is that actually I don't I don't really know if it, it did it on purpose, but actually Alana Bean's foot orthosis is exactly the combination of four characteristics that has been separately proved in the literature as performance criteria on the on the reduction on the ECAM. So that's maybe it can explain why we have uh, a better result uh, a better result on this reduction than in, uh, in the literature, uh, except if we made some mistake, but uh, <laughs> it can be an explanation that, uh, <laughs> that uh, our foot orthosis uh, give um, uh, uh, a real better result than in the literature because the combination of those, uh, of those three char uh, four characteristics. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.